to the Save It For Parts channel. I've got a lot of potato cannons, and I've always wondered, what's the best kind of potato gun? So we've brought a few of them out here to Sandland, and we're going to shoot them off and find out scientifically which kind of potato cannon is the best. We've got my propane specialty here with the interchangeable barrels, so we'll be testing a few different barrel sizes for speed, accuracy, and convenience. We've got my terrible pneumatic cannon, which uses compressed air to fire potatoes. And we're going to see how that compares to the combustion version. We also have this more traditional sparky clicker cannon that you shoot hairspray or starting fluid into. So we'll compare that to the propane and pneumatic guns as well. We've also got some outdoor cannons, including the mounted deck gun and the howitzer. I don't have a video for this one since I built it a long time ago, but it's kind of cool. It's a basic combustion cannon with a spark plug igniter. And it's kind of a longer barrel, so we might see some more velocity and accuracy out of this one. If you want to know more about this howitzer, you can check out the video that I made on this, and I'll put a link to that up in the corner. And then I also have some special guests with me here today who have brought their own designs. So we'll compare everything we've brought and see what happens. And again, we're being extremely scientific with this. Let's get started. So first up, we're going to try the traditional potato gun, and we're just going to try a couple shots at a clay pigeon down there. 35 feet is our test range because that's where the barrel sits and that's a good spot, so that's going to be our test distance for accuracy. Well, we're losing points on reliability already. That's the problem with these barbecue clickers is they don't always go off. Let's try that again. Not enough gas. That's the other problem with reliability on these, is you just have to guess how much fluid to shoot in there. You can use hairspray or starting fluid. They're all a little different on how much air to fuel mixture to do. So let's move on to the propane cannon. This one uses a torch for ignition, which is also not 100% reliable, but it seems to work better than the old clicky style. All right, reliability is okay. Accuracy, not so much. I didn't really hit my target there. Still not very accurate. Explain what this one is for the channel. Uh, it's a tiny little air cannon with a sprinkler uh, valve. Let's try again at higher pressure. All right, next up we're going to try the chronograph and see how fast a potato goes out of the propane cannon. Forty-one point four meters per second. Yeah, one nine three. Seventy-nine point three. That's well, a lot more. That's a lot more. Is that the... All right, we're gonna move on to the howitzer. I think it's gonna be more accurate and probably more reliable because it's got that ignition system that's a little better than any of the others. It is, however, a lot less convenient to use because it's so big. Big fire in the hole. Power you, level's too low. But you did hit the lower one right on. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't give it enough gas. Targets. Fire in the hole. Oh. <laughs> Just barely missed the target. Fire. Missed again. Alright, we're going to try and chronograph the howitzer now. 59.8. <laughs> Send it! It didn't even come out. <laughs> just stick it out the end. <laughs> Is it right at the tip? Yeah, just the tip. Just the tip. That one was hot. It didn't like that. <laughs> that one was way faster. Yeah, the chronograph didn't even register that one. Fire! <laughs> <laughs> 8.5! Next up, we're trying the mounted yeah, deck gun. Right. I don't know, starting fluid just doesn't uh, do it very well. Alright, accuracy test with the air gun. First, we gotta air it up. Two inch barrel, 80 psi. One inch barrel, 
53. That's the most accurate so far. Chronograph test on Carl's potato gun. He's got the little U-shaped model. We'll see the uh, meters per second on this one. Whoa! It says 1.2. I think I was too close. Yeah, that was fast. 1.2 kilometers. Yeah. <laughs> 74.1. That's a little more like it. So this is Kyle's metal cannon using some classified materials for propulsion and firing a potato down there. Oh my god. Well, we've destroyed one of the cameras and possibly the shooter, but the target remains unscathed. <laughs> Lower than before. Uh, actually, it looks like we splashed the can a little bit. Oh my god. But we missed our uh, clay pigeon. That's close enough. At great risk to the chronograph, we are going to attempt it with the metal cannon. And it's gone. And the chronograph has died. Huh? All right, new question for science. Where did the chronograph go? Survived. Oh, there it is. It survived. Partly. Oh, it is covered in goo. All right, so we have destroyed the chronograph, but since this is the Save It For Parts channel, we will be saving it for parts <laughs> and trying to make something else out of it. All right, we've got some good science put together. We did finally get that traditional potato gun to work. Unfortunately, the hairspray that we brought was all gummed up, and that had worked the best in the past. And then uh, the starting fluid that we used was just not working. It was just too hard to get a consistent amount with the right fuel to air mixture. So we did get the traditional gun to work. We never really did get the mounted deck gun to work properly. So we don't have a chronograph measurement on that. But other than that, we have some good science here. So now it's time to take all of these messy numbers and turn them into a messy spreadsheet with some pretty graphs. Let's take a closer look at these. So first up we have muzzle velocity. The modular potato cannon, which was the handheld one using the propane tank, had the highest measured muzzle velocity at almost 80 meters per second. Next up we had almost identical muzzle velocity from the air gun with the two inch barrel and that smaller U-shaped air gun those are both around 75. And then next to that was the modular gun with the one inch barrel. And I think that got a little less velocity due to the design of the barrel. It has that L shape in it for feeding bouncy balls down. So that could be acting a bit as a pressure relief or piston. Next up and very close to the modular with one inch was the howitzer. Then we had the air gun with the one inch barrel. And then down at the bottom is the standard potato gun with the pistol grip. That had the lowest muzzle velocity of around 46 meters per second. We were not able to get measurements for the mounted deck gun just because our fuel was so inconsistent and our metal cannon almost destroyed the chronograph so we weren't really able to get a measurement on that. Next up we have reloading time and this is measured in seconds so on this graph the left hand of the graph is better and the right side is worse. So the best reloading time was that modular potato gun with the two inch barrel it took just under 25 seconds to reload that. The modular with the one inch barrel took a little bit longer to load because it's harder to push a potato down a one inch pipe. The mounted deck gun was a little slower. The standard with the pistol grip was a little slower as well. It's a little clumsier to handle that one and ram the potato down it. The howitzer came right in the middle. It's fairly convenient to load from the back, but it does take a little longer to get everything set up and get it primed with the propane. The air guns all had pretty bad reloading times because you have to wait for the compressor to finish. And then the metal cannon was the worst reloading time because it's a long drawn out process to get that prepped. Next up we have reliability. And I measured this as how many times does it actually work out of 10 tries. Not surprisingly the air guns got a 10 out of 10. Those work every time. If you want a reliable potato gun that always works, go with an air design. The metal cannon also worked every time due to its design. The howitzer was fairly reliable, but it did have a couple failures. It's a little finicky to get the propane mix just right, so if you don't do it just right, you get uh, kind of a squib fire where the potato just 
falls out the end of the barrel. You saw that in a couple shots. The modular potato gun is starting to fail. I've used this in a lot of videos and I'm honestly wearing it out. I believe the ignition element does not like the high pressure and heat of the explosions inside that chamber. So after a while, it just stops working and you have to reach in there and screw around with it. So right now, the modular gun is unfortunately not very reliable. And then down at the bottom end are the two aerosol fuel guns, the mounted one and the standard potato gun. And these, we just had a heck of a time getting them to work. Like I said, we had the wrong fuel. The intended fuel that we brought uh, was all gummed up because it's really old hairspray. And after experimenting around, we found some alternative fuel, but it still wasn't very reliable. So these next few measurements are a bit subjective because they're just based on a poll of everybody who was there. How convenient are these different guns? The modular air gun comes in at an 8 out of 10 with each barrel. The standard with the pistol grip is about a 7 out of 10. The small air cannon that Carl made with the U-shape is about a 6 out of 10. The howitzer comes in right in the middle at a 5 out of 10 convenience. It's convenient to load from the breech, but it's really inconvenient to wheel it around and set it up, and it's just too big and heavy. Likewise, the mounted deck gun, pretty inconvenient, and you can't roll it around. It's just stuck in one place, so you have a limited number of places you can shoot it. The two versions of my air gun were less convenient as well. It's a bit of a process to air them up, and it's a bit of a hassle to load them, so they're less convenient. The metal cannon was the least convenient because it takes a lot of screwing around to get it to load. So conversely, let's look at coolness factor. Right up at the top is the howitzer. We decided that was a 10 out of 10 for coolness. The mounted deck gun was a 9 out of 10. The modular gun and the metal cannon we figured were around an 8 out of 10 for coolness. The standard potato gun is only about a 7. The little U-shaped air gun is about a 6. And my air gun with either barrel is somewhere around a 5. It's pretty ugly, it's not that cool. Next up we have accuracy. The air gun with the one inch barrel was the most accurate. It's pretty easy to aim and we actually hit our small target at 35 feet. The howitzer was fairly accurate. You can kind of aim down the barrel and crank it to a certain position, but it didn't always hit the target. The modular gun with the one inch barrel was also pretty accurate. We're seeing a trend with those one inch barrels. I think the smaller barrel diameter helps make that potato plug go straighter for some reason. The air gun with the two inch barrel was a little less accurate. And then the modular, with the two inch barrel and the standard were both around a six out of 10 for accuracy. The mounted deck gun was pretty inaccurate. It's just really hard to aim down that thing. And then Carl's little air cannon was also pretty inaccurate. I don't think we even hit the box next to the target with that one. The metal cannon did hit a barrel that our target was taped to, but we never hit the target and we never came close enough to even knock the target off of the barrel. All right, so finally, we have a total score for all of the potato guns that we've tested today. So I've done a little bit of math on this. I've taken the meters per second and divided by 10, and then I've taken the time, inverted it, and multiplied that by 100 so that all of our numbers for each score category are in the one to 10 range. And then I just added up all the scores. So on the left, we see the three propane-powered potato guns, and they all came in very close with around 40 out of 100 score. In the middle, we see the three air cannons. They also came in all very close with about a 35. And interestingly enough, these did not score the same in each category, but they each had different pros and cons, and so they all kind of measured out to approximately equal in each type. Um, propane ones were all about the same, air guns were all about the same. I thought that was really interesting. Now the two purple bars are the aerosol guns. The standard potato gun that you shoot hairspray into and click the barbecue lighter got a little better score than the mounted version. Uh, they're both essentially the same cannon, same design. However, we were not able to test the muzzle velocity on that mounted deck gun, so it lost some points. Likewise, the metal cannon lost points because we could not test the muzzle velocity and we could not hit anything with it. So even though it was really cool and had a lot of other things going for it, it came in at the bottom of our score. I should also note, it's probably the most dangerous design, and I would not recommend building one. I didn't build that one, it was a special guest cannon, and I'd have to think long and hard if I ever built one of those myself. So then, have we answered the question of, what is the best potato gun? I would say, it really depends. 
In general, it seems like a propane fuel design comes in the highest in total score. However, it's not necessarily the most reliable. So if reliability is more important to you, you'll probably want something with a compressed air chamber. However, if reloading time is more important to you, stay away from the air guns because they take way too long to come up to pressure. If you want a cool looking gun, apparently you just have to paint it olive drab and put some wheels on it. If you want an accurate potato cannon, you should probably stick with a 1 inch barrel versus a 2 inch or larger barrel. However, if you want a higher muzzle velocity, you probably want a 2 inch barrel versus a 1 inch barrel. So in conclusion, the best potato gun really depends on the person. It really depends what's most important to you. Do you value accuracy? Do you value reliability? Reloading time? Coolness? Convenience factor? Muzzle velocity? These are all factors to consider when you're building a potato cannon. I hope this has been an informative video. As I noted, a few things went wrong, uh, including our aerosol fuel and some of our ignition systems and a few other things uh, didn't work very well. We also had a pretty cheap chronograph, so I don't care too much that we blew it up and we did kind of get it working again after that, although I don't know how reliable some of the readings are. Another problem I had today was with the potatoes. Um, we picked up several sacks of small red potatoes, and it turned out that these did not quite fit in some of the two inch barrels. So we didn't get a super tight seal every time. And that really affects the meters per second muzzle velocity and the accuracy, because if some air or compressed gases are leaking out around the potato, it doesn't fly quite as straight or as fast. Now we did try for all of our measurements to get as tight a fit with as tight a potato as we could and I think we got some reasonably accurate measurements but if we redid this in the future I would use larger potatoes and we would do more measurements to get a more accurate average of some of these numbers but that's going to be something for a sequel video which we may or may not do depending on if we rebuild some of these cannons or build different cannons until then thanks for watching and check out some of my other videos I have quite a few on the build process for some of these potato guns and on some interesting attachments like grappling hook launchers, net launchers, and things of that nature. Feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.